Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's talk a little bit more deeper, I would say, um, about function limits. Um, our purpose uh, in this lecture right now is to introduce a concept which is a, a fundamental uh, concept of calculus. I will not call it derivative, but it will be very much related to derivative. I will use the graphical uh, symbolism and uh, the graphical approach to this. I call it steepness of the curve. Uh, and also I would like to introduce the very important constant in calculus, uh, constant E. This uh, lecture is obviously the part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and high school students. It's presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website and read the detailed notes for this lecture before or after um, this lecture. So, first of all, let's talk about steepness. Now, the concept of steepness actually was introduced before in this course when I was talking about function a to the power of x, the exponential function. And in particular, we were talking about, okay, this is 1, and this is the graph of the function. Now, what's interesting is, and I did discuss this, different a obviously result in different graphs. Now, the greater um, value of base A leads to more, to a steeper graph uh, at the point zero. So the steepness is actually measured by, um, the, by, by, by the tangential line at this particular point. So let me just leave only one graph rather than two and we will draw a tangential line. So if this is the graph, my, my tangential line goes somewhere like this, right? Now, that was actually part of the algebra course when I introduced exponential functions. Now, what's very important in this particular case, I was talking about function 2 to the power of x and function 3 to the power of x. And it was proven um, in the algebra part that this function has this particular tangential line at less than 45 degrees angle and this one greater than 45 degrees and go. Or, in, um, in other words, um, the steepness, which is basically measured as the following. You take this point where you want to measure the steepness, you increment argument. So if this is zero, this is d d is increment and you compare increment of the function which is a to the power of x plus d minus a to the power of x divided by increment of the argument which is x plus d minus x right so if this is x but in this case x is zero so we can actually put just like this and a to the power of 0 is 1 so that would be my steepness with this particular increment of the argument now as we move this particular argument closer and closer to 0 my chord would be closer and closer to the tangential line right because these two points are moving together, they're closing the gap, and my chord will be, if this point moves to this, then it would be this, 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 
and eventually at some limit it will be a tangential line so using I did not use the, the, the term limit at the time but now we can so now we know that this steepness can be measured as a limit of increment of the function well let me just talk about general function not necessarily so limit of this minus this so that's increment of the function so if this is x this is x plus d so we take increment of the function which is this one and divide by increment of the argument and limit as d tends to zero this is actually the steepness as we have geometrically kind of um, implied um, expressed in more rigorous terminology of limits so again back to our exponential function we are talking about this minus a to the power of 0 is 1 which is basically the steepness steepness at x equals 0 and that's what we are actually interested in right now steepness in this particular point okay now we have basically proven back in the algebra course that the steepness of this curve whenever it's less than 45 degrees is less than 1 so 2 to the power x has less than 1 steepness 3 to the power x has greater than 1 steepness so this tangential line is less than 45 if I will put 3 to the power of x it would be greater than 45 now now I will make not really very rigorous assumption that as I'm increasing a from 2 to 3 my tangential line somewhere will be at 45 degrees and the steepness will be equal to 1 it's kind of an assumption actually so it's not 100% rigorous however it's a very reasonable assumption you obviously understand that the greater the a the smoothly it's smoothly increasing and it's smoothly increasing the tangential line as well so there is some value between 2 and 3 where this tangential line is at 45 degrees exactly and the, and the steepness is equal to 1 that particular base of exponential function where the steepness at point x equal to 0 equals to 1 is exactly the number e we are talking about now it's called e most likely in honor of a uh, very famous mathematician Euler or Euler um, he was Swiss mathematician he lived almost his entire life in um, in Russia in St. Petersburg um, basically one of the founders of Russian mathematical school so anyway um, I think it was in his honor this constant was called E and approximately it's equal to 2.71 and then etc now obviously it's not integer because it's between 2 and 3 um, it's actually irrational uh, it can be proven but that's another story anyway what what is important is that we kind of assumed that it exists this particular in the middle point where the um, uh, steepness is exactly equal to one and the base which corresponds to this particular graph is our number which we want to define called e it's a very very fundamental constant um, in calculus lots of different things are related to this so anyway um, what can we say as a result of this well as a result we have introduced the number e irrational number e 
And what's the property of this number? We basically have defined it using this characteristic property. So what's the characteristic property? That e to the power of d minus 1 divided by d tends to 1 as d tends to 0. Okay, so this is a defining property of the number e. And again, I did not really go into theorems of existence and uniqueness of this number. I was just trying to convey certain logical um, statements which lead to existence of this number e between 2 and 3. Okay, so what's interesting is that the number e can be defined in many other ways because it has many other defining properties, so to speak. And all these definitions are actually equivalent to each other and one can be derived from another. And let me just um, put together a couple of other definitions which right now can be considered as properties or as theorems, if you wish. If we assume this is a definition, then other definitions become theorems or vice versa. But I'll just list them without any proof. What's interesting is that this goes to E as N goes to infinity. Now, what else? Uh, well, equivalent to this, if instead of 1 over N we have some kind of a variable D which goes to 0, then N becomes 1 over D. So this is, so here is N goes to infinity and here D goes to 0. That's another property. Next. Next is, next looks kind of complicated. This goes to E as G goes to infinity, uh, N, sorry, N. And, uh, and one more thing I have here, it's uh, 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus etc. plus 1 over n factorial plus etc. This also goes to E. Or if you wish, sigma 1 over n factorial and from 0 to infinity. That goes to E as well. Oh, sorry. So these are very important uh, properties. Each one of them can be proven as a theorem and we might actually derive some, some of these formulas as well, some of these limits. But in any case, they're all kind of equivalent to whatever I have decided to choose as, as a definition of the number E. And uh, let me just state at a conclusion of this lecture this definition in epsilon delta language which is always useful so what does this mean it means that for any epsilon greater than zero there exists such d that's a uh, d neighborhood of zero in this particular case that as long as well let me just put delta here as usual so we don't get confused epsilon delta as long as uh, d minus zero well basically so it's just d uh, less than or delta immediately follows from this. So if d is very small in the immediate neighborhood of zero, delta neighborhood of zero, that this would be very close to one, which means absolute value of e 
d minus 1 divided by d minus 1 would be less than or equal to epsilon. That's what it means. So this is epsilon delta definition, which is basically expressed as, as a limit here. So for any positive epsilon, there is such a delta, delta neighborhood of zero, if you wish, that as long as our argument is within this neighborhood of zero, small neighborhood of zero, my function would be very close to one, closer than epsilon. All right, so I consider that the concept of a steepness, which is basically, let me just repeat again, steepness of the function at point x is difference between values of um, a function divided by uh, difference between the values of argument. So on the graph, if this is x, this is x plus h, this is f at x plus h, and this is f at x. So we take the difference between values of functions, between, so it's this divided by this. So this is basically a tangent of the angle of the chord. But as long as I take the limit of this, if h goes to 0, which means I'm getting closer and closer and closer, then chord actually becomes a tangential line. So I have a tangent of tangential line. Well, tangential line sometimes is called tangent as well, but I don't want to say tangent of tangent, being the, f the first tangent being a trigonometric function, and the second tangent being the line. So I'm using tangent and tangential line. So this particular thing is a trigonometric function tangent of a tangential line at point x. Well, obviously, if it exists, if this particular limit exists, because, some, because sometimes there is no limit. Let me just give you a very quick example. Of a function where this does not really exist. Consider the function y equals absolute value of x. It has a graph, this, right? Positive x, it's x. Negative x, it's minus x. So it's always positive. Now, is there a limit of this function um, increment if x is equal to 0? h is equal to, uh, h goes to 0. In this particular point? Well, not exactly. Because if I'm approaching from here, my tangent is actually the same as this one. This would be 45 degrees, and the tangent is equal to 1. If I'm approaching from this, my argument would be negative, but my um, ordinate would be positive, so it would be negative. So this is 135 degrees. So these are two different tangents if we are approaching zero from two different uh, sides. Now, in the definition of this limit, I'm not really saying about which side I'm approaching. Maybe from left, maybe from right, maybe from a mixture. Like here, 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 and then close and close. And whenever I'm doing something like this, this function at point x is equal to zero, does not have this limit at all. So it's not always exists. So we're talking about smooth functions. Smooth in the terms of this limit exists. OK, so we have introduced the concept of a steepness, which will be obviously converted later on into a concept of derivative of the function. And then we have introduced today a constant e, which is a very, very important constant uh, in, in calculus. I do suggest you to read the um, notes for this particular textbook, uh, for, for this particular lecture as a textbook at unisor.com. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.